Welcome back. So now we've reached our final video in this little series about permutations with restrictions, right? So what we are doing now, okay, is creating um, passwords, right? So if you think back, we've looked at um, arrangements using letters, and then we moved on to arrangements using people, right? Now we're going to be looking at arrangements using numbers, right? So digits, okay? So with this one, okay, you have to read the question. Sometimes they can put in repetition, right, when you're looking at numbers, right? But most of the time, the restriction that they put in when you are looking at numbers is that you have no repetition, right? But just read the question and see whether or not you have repetition or no repetition, okay? Now, um, with numbers, you are also not going to be looking at the case of similar objects, right, because each and every number is distinct from another one, right? So a 1 is not equal to a 2, and a 2 is not equal to a 4 in any way, okay? Right, so let's read this question. It says that the digits 1 to 7, okay, are to be used to create a four-digit code, right, to enter a locked room, right? If we had just stopped this scenario right over here, okay, and I just asked you um, in how many ways can you create these four-digit codes using um, the digits 1 to 7, then that would be a straightforward application of your permutation formula, okay, because then what you would have is seven distinct objects, right, and from those seven, you want to just pick four, right, so you would basically just have um, seven pick four, like that, okay? So we know that this would become seven factorial, right, divided by seven minus four factorial, okay? So this is just straightforward application of your permutation formula, right? But unfortunately, they don't stop the question right over here, okay? They carry on and they add some restrictions that you need to take into account. So, unfortunately, you can't just apply the permutation formula. You also need to now start thinking about um, the fundamental counting principle. Right. So, the question is, how many different codes are possible, right, if the digits must not be repeated? Okay, so there's the first restriction. We have no repetition. Second restriction is that the code must be an even number. So now this brings in the element of remembering what condition right, must be in place in order for a number to be regarded as even. Right? So now we know that any even number right, has its last digit as an even number as well. Right? So the last digit has to be either a 2, a 4, a 6, or an 8. All right? So those are all the even digits, right? So if the last digit of your number, right? So for example, if we take uh, 26, right? 26 is even because this last digit is an even number, right? Or something like 37,440, okay? This number is also even because this last digit is even, right? Oh, sorry, I forgot to add the digit 0, right? So, 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8, right? These are our even digits, okay? So, if the last digit ends in any of these numbers, right, then the number qualifies as n even number. Right. Now, what's the last restriction they put in over here? We need to consider the fact that our uh, four-digit code, right, has to be a number bigger than 5,000. Okay. So, if it's bigger than 5,000, it means that this first digit, right, can only be numbers greater than 5, right, greater than or equal to 5, actually. Okay. So, the set of digits that we are given to work with Right, so set of digits. We are given the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 only. Okay, 
So if we want to create a code that is greater than 5,000, it means that this first uh, position can only take these three digits over here, right? So 5, 6, and 7. Okay. So you can already see that the fundamental counting principle is coming through because we are already making choices, right? So we are deciding how many digits um, can we put in the first position and how many digits can we put in the last position, right? So based on the restrictions that have been put in place, right? So now that we know that, right, we can now actually draw up our little lines, right? We've already spoken about the fact that if we want this code to be greater than 5,000, right, we can use the numbers 5, or the digits, sorry, 5, 6, and 7 over here, right, and then we want it to be even as well, right, so we can use any of these numbers, but we were only required to use from 1 to 7, right, so we don't have 8 available, right, and we also don't have zero available, okay? So over here, we can use the digits two, four, and six, okay? This makes um, our number even, right? Now, after that, okay, we now need to take into account this condition over here, right? Where we say that we can't repeat any digits, right? And you can already see we have a problem because we've already repeated the 6. Okay, so it's not really that much of a problem. We can calculate right, the entire um, combination that we're going to have now, right? And then just subtract conditions where you do choose the 6 in the first and the last position. Okay. For this first part, right, you can say that, well, in the first slot, right, you have three choices, okay? So you have these three digits to choose from, okay? Then you need to multiply that, okay? We'll skip these two for now and go over here, right? So in this last position, you also have three choices, okay? But now, once you've placed your first digit, right, and your last digit, you've already used up two of your digits, okay? So from this total of seven, right, seven minus two, you're only left with five digits, right? So you only have five choices left over here, and then because you can't repeat, once you place that one digit, you only have four choices over here, okay? So this is going to give us um, the number of codes, right, where the 6, right, is actually repeated, okay? So we need to subtract that out, okay? So we're going to consider the case where you put the 6, right, you lock the 6 in your first and your last position, Well, if it's fixed as a 6 and a 6, then it's just one choice and one choice, okay? Now, um, you've repeated it, so you've basically technically used two of your digits, right? Which leaves you with five, okay, and four choices here in the middle, right? So this is going to give you um, an answer, right? So then, therefore, the total number of codes... The total number of codes okay, is going to be 3 times 5 times 4 times 3. Okay. Then the second sum right, works out to 20 codes where your six is repeated in your first and last position, okay? That's going to give you 160 different codes, okay? So that's one way um, to think about the situation, right? Another way is to break it up into a series of cases, okay? 
So let's look at that. Right, so if you take the route of thinking about um, the different cases, right, that you can create, right, you end up seeing that you can create three different cases, right. So it's either you start with the codes that only start with six, right, so you fix the first position to only have a six, okay. Another case is to fix the last position to only have a six, then obviously then the third case is going to be to avoid the repetition of six altogether right and only consider the codes that neither start or end with six let's put the one in here right for our one choice and underneath over here just by the side let's put here in curly brackets that we are only choosing a six right to be fixed in that first position okay so now think about what we've done, right? We've used the, the digit 6, right? And then we're going to use either one of these two digits, right? Either the 2 or the 4, right? But either way, at this point, we've used two of our digits, right? Which leaves us with a remaining five digits to choose from, right? And then we have four digits to choose from, right? So this is going to give us an answer. Okay. Now let's look at... The second case right so in the second case we now flip this around and we fix the last position to be a six okay so we're only going to put a six over here right which means that we have one choice okay let's go back to the first position right what is the restriction on our first position? The restriction on the first position is that this code right, has to be greater than 5,000. Right? So which means that we have these digits to choose from, but we don't want to use the 6. So we only have the 5 and the 7 to use, right? making us have two choices in there. Again, we've now used up two of our digits, leaving five digits over and then four. Okay, and that's going to give us a certain answer, right? Now, let's go into the last case, right, where we want to avoid the repetition altogether, right? We don't want to look at a 6 in, uh, in the first position or in the last position in any way, okay? So, which means that if we consider the restriction of the first position, if we don't want to see a 6 there, then we can only use the 5 and the 7, right? Making us have two choices. Let's go to this last position. If we don't want to see a 6 over here as well, then again, we only have the 2 and the 4 to choose from, which gives us two choices, right? Now, at this point, right, um, you are going to use either four of these numbers so for the first position you're going to use either five or seven and same thing for the last position but at the end of the day at this point you've now used up two of your digits leaving you with five and four digits to choose from in your middle okay so then now we just have to evaluate all of these answers okay and then therefore The total number of codes, right, or the number of codes, the so total number of codes that we can create, right, is going to be given by the sum of all of these answers. Okay, so it's going to be the first answer plus the third, second answer plus our last answer. Okay, and that will then give us the total number of codes. Okay, so let's go into our calculator. Ah, we don't really need to, right? I can do this in my head, right? So 5 times 4 is um, 20, 20 times 2 is 40, right? So that's 40 codes that specifically start with 6. And you can see that this is still the same numbers over here, so you'll still get 40 codes that specifically end with 6, right? And now over here, right, we have 5 times 4, which is 20. Double 20, you get 40. Double 40, you get 80. So 80 codes.
codes, okay, that neither start or end with 6, right? So adding all of this up, we get 40 plus 40, which is 80. 80 plus 80 is going to be 160 uh, different codes. Okay. So now I've also given you two different ways to think about this situation, right? So it's now up to you, right, to find more questions, right, and choose the method that works best for you, right? So with um, permutations, right, so with this section of fundamental counting principle, it all just boils down to being able to arrange your thought process, right? So you need to use a method that makes sense to you, right? So you need to be able to think it through, right? Reason it through by yourself. Right, so then that's it for this video and also for the series on permutations with restrictions, right? I hope you guys learned something and I will see you guys next time.